What's up guys and welcome back to another PC video. In this video I'm going to show you guys how you use an external graphics card with your laptop. Now this has been done a lot but I want to show you guys how it is indeed possible and you can connect anything up to PCIe 4.0. Now there are some pros and cons to doing this, but it works quite well. Now here I have an MSI Sword 15 A11UC laptop. It has a 11800 CPU, which is 8 core 16 threads, which is pretty good. But the GPU is where it suffers. And the GPU it has on here is an NVIDIA RTX 3050, which only has 4GB of VRAM. And that's terrible. This is probably going to be one of the worst graphics cards you can get for a laptop or even for a PC. But if you're on a budget and it's all you can afford, it's better to have one than not have one at all. Firstly, the things you're going to need in order to get this to work is the external graphics card device. When you buy this, there are a few options that you can buy. And one is where it connects via your M2 slot NVMe meaning you would have to remove your SSD from your laptop so that you can plug this in and it would read via the M2 slot. Now when you do that, you need to ensure that you've got another way to boot Windows and have your games on another SSD. Usually there are two ways you can do this. If your laptop is lucky enough to have another M2 drive, then you just install it in the other M2 drive and you're good to go. If you don't have another M2 drive, you could always use your SATA drive as your boot drive now, which is the 2.5 inch drive. It's already in here, but I'm gonna open it up and show you in just a second. Because I'm going to be replacing my original boot drive, which is the M2 drive, I now have to use another boot drive, which is going to be my SATA drive, and that's going to contain Windows and my games, etc. And of course, power supply for your laptop, your external graphics card and a power supply to power the device so it can power your graphics card. I also strongly recommend to use an external monitor unless your monitor for your laptop is exactly what you want which is say 144 hertz at 1080p then get yourself an external monitor that way you can reach higher frame rates especially if you're on an older laptop that doesn't have the 144 hertz monitor lucky enough this monitor does have a 1080p monitor at 144 hertz so that's great you could just use the monitor here but i'm going to show you how you connect it to an external monitor that way if you have a really high spec pc monitor you can use it the point is to show you how to connect it to an external monitor so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the back of this laptop and we're going to remove all these screws so that we can get inside the laptop and plug in our external GPU device. We'll just call it eGPU for short. This is an MSI laptop, so all the screws are the same except for one. So don't worry about mixing up your screws because the only one you really need to pay attention to is this little one right here. This is the only one that's a really short screw, but the rest are the exact same size, so you can put them in any of the screw holes and it's going to be fine. Just going to turn it upside down and hopefully they all fall out. All these screws removed, we're going to pry apart this back cover. What I like to do is just pry it from the side here, right? I just begin to pull it apart like that and you just work your way all the way around. So as you can see here, I already have an SSD installed, but this laptop came like this. It had this rubber in place and it had this M2 installed like so and that's the screw that retains the M2 drive what we're going to do here is install our eGPU drive and we install our external graphics card device into our M2 slot now find the perfect um, curve for your cable because you don't want it to be all tight where it always uh, pops out so you just take this out take out your screw install your M2 eGPU um, riser cable and then we install our M2 screw to secure it on. We're going to install our SATA drive so lucky enough I had this SATA port here but if you don't have a SATA port you can always use an external M2 which plugs in via USB or a type C cable and that will still work. We just plug this in now like so and now that's our boot drive with our games on it. Flip this around and then we have to guide 
our device around. We need this cable to sit as flat as possible. See how I'm trying not to get the cable to bend too much? We set up our eGPU by plugging everything in. So all we're going to need now is the ATX from your power supply and that plugs into here, your 24 pin. Just plug that in, make sure it clips on. You just plug in four pins of your CPU cable. It says CPU four pin. You just have to worry about the four pin here. So you just plug that in. They supply this dual eight pin cable so that you can power your graphics card. Plug that in here because it says GPU power output. You plug that in here. We have a GPU that only uses two eight pins. As you can see here, it only uses two eight pins. So that's going to be fine in this case. Plug in our power supply. We'll turn it off, plug it in. And we'll plug in the power supply to our laptop. We have everything ready to power. We can now install our graphics card into this. You install it just like you would any other graphics card. You have your PCIe x16 slot here. You've got your lock-in tab. And then this is what's going to hold your GPU slot. Now, I've only installed one because when I had the other one in, it didn't line up properly with this slot. So I'm only going to use one and that's fine, so long as it holds the GPU upright. We line up our PCIe x16 slot with this. Our slot here must line up with this gap here. And this thread must come through our slot where you normally install your screw for your graphics card to retain it. We line up our PCIe x16 slot, ensure that our slot goes through here, the gap, and then this thread comes through where our screw is meant to go. Then you just push it down. Use the thumb screw they have supplied and install your thumb screw just so it holds your GPU upright. It really is that easy. That's how you install the graphics card onto this device. Finally, you have the external power from this device, which you then plug into the graphics card. So your PSU will supply power to the device and the device now outputs power to your graphics card. It's got two eight pins, so plug in the appropriate cables, two eight pins, and that's it. We just have to power up our external monitor our HDMI cable plugs into our HDMI port of the graphics card because, of course, we're using an external graphics card, so it must use the graphics off the card, not the laptop. You can see the green light right there. We have power to our monitor. All right, so now just to double check everything, we have our power supply here, which is plugged in, plugs into our eGPU 24 pin, and the CPU also plugs in just half of it, which is just four pins. And then we have our output power, which goes straight to your graphics card. We have our monitor here, which has a HDMI cable, and then it plugs into your graphics card. You have your laptop here, and your laptop must have power also. You then plug in the monitor power. That is it, guys. So now let's turn on our laptop. Now we just press the power button to our laptop, and look at that. The PSU spins to life, so does the graphics card. We now have our boot screen. I'll close this up because it should boot onto this screen straight away. It's reading HDMI. There we go, guys. Look at that. I have installed the driver already. In this case, I have an AMD graphics card. This is an NVIDIA laptop. So we need to ensure that we download the AMD driver. So if your display isn't all nice like this, it just means you need to download the driver first. So the first thing you need to do is check that it is in fact reading your device. So you go to device manager and under device manager, you should be able to see the graphics card plugged in. So here it is right here, AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT. So if we went into task manager, we can see what it is reading. So our CPU is the 11800, which idles at 2.3 gigahertz and then it boosts to 4.1 one gigahertz when needed it has eight core 16 threads so that is plenty for gaming and that combined with the rx 6800 is going to be a very decent gaming platform so you know don't be discouraged if you're afraid of connecting all this up it really isn't too complicated and you can simply follow these steps first thing you want to do after you have got it to boot is go to the amd website and download the appropriate driver and then you research AMD, and then you go down to where it says AMD drivers and support. Click on that, 
and then you scroll down to download Windows drivers and then you go down to graphics from here you select the 6000 series and then you select 6800 series and then you select 6800 XT simply click submit and it will find the appropriate drivers now we are running Windows 10 if you are unsure what Windows you're running simply go into settings and then you go into Windows update if you want and it tells us here that we are running Windows 11 Pro. We need to go into Windows 11 64B and then you go to the download tab here and you simply click download. It will now download and once that finishes downloading you then install it and I'm going to show you how you do that right now as well. So we just wait for it to finish downloading. Make sure you do have an appropriate power supply that will power your graphics card quite easily. Here we have an 850 watt gold MSI power supply so that is definitely going to do the job. And we can see that we have downloaded the appropriate driver. We click on it and then we install it. You go yes, you want to install. It will find the driver and initialize it. Just going to check against your hardware to ensure that you do have an AMD device and right now it's saying yes it can read the AMD device so now you install it now you just let the software do its thing and by the time it finishes you may have you will most likely restart your PC and from there it should just boot perfectly fine and your new driver will now run your graphics card with your laptop now don't get me wrong your laptop will still work and if we go to the monitor here, so let's go to display settings and let's extend it so we have two monitors. We can do that, one and one, because right now we are duplicating. What we want to do is extend these displays. So now we have two displays, see? And from here you're going to see once we, we'll keep the changes first and we identify it. We have monitor one, monitor two. So if we click monitor two, monitor two and we make this our main display. So now everything will go onto this monitor right here. We'll then also go to display settings of this monitor. And because it's side by side, in order to get to your other monitor, you need to go sideways to number one. See? And then you identify and it will say monitor one, monitor two. Then from here, you can choose your scaling. So I'm going to go to 150 as recommended and see how it goes really small now. That's kind of like what I want, but you could use it how you choose as well. Now I'm only going to go with 1440p and we will keep the changes. It looks really good. So right now it's only running at 60 hertz because this is just my external monitor. If we were to use this monitor here, which is going to be our internal display, you could choose 144 hertz because this is actually a 144 hertz monitor. Right, so that's basically it guys. That's how you set up your display and how you use an external graphics card with your laptop. So I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs. Signing off.